Hi, Senator. My name is Hannah Mackey with the Detroit News. Um, you've spoken out against Chinese battery maker Goshen coming to Michigan. Do you have any reaction to the Politico story that says Goshen was paying Trump campaign manager Susie Wiles' lobbying firm nearly $1 million? No, I, I don't have a comment because I've never seen that story. Um, I will certainly read that story and, and try to understand what's going on there. What might be going on is your boss rails on companies for political clout while he and his closest advisors are paid by them behind everyone's back. It's a simple case of hypocrisy. Just post a few weeks ago, the Chinese electric vehicle battery company that Michigan Democrats support, Goshen, claimed that I support its EV battery plant planned for northern Michigan. That's not true. The Goshen plant would be very bad for the state and our country. It would put Michiganders under the thumb of the Chinese Communist Party in Beijing. I am 100% opposed. As your president, I will make America's auto industry bigger and stronger than it has ever been before. Protect American workers and terminate the Green New Scam. No word on how he'll make the auto industry bigger and stronger. No explanation of how he'll protect American workers when he's been campaigning on firing them for fighting for livable wages. And at this point... Talk of the Green New Deal is nothing more than a slogan, as it's pretty clear all he knows about it is that it has something to do with protecting the environment. But nothing on the EV company paying his campaign manager's firm about a million dollars to persuade elected officials to do their bidding. It's those kinds of revealing questions that Trump avoids by tossing out hatred for anyone reporting the truth. They're just, they're just, they're just bad people. And until we get a fair and free press in this country, they're just bad people. I mean, look how easy. Here you have all they have to do is just go, huh? Huh. One inch this way and one inch this way and you got it. They don't want to do that. They're the enemy of the people. I, I, they are. They're the enemy of the. I've been asked not to say it. I don't want to say it. They're the enemy of the people. And someday they're not going to be the enemy of the people, I hope. Which people are these journalists the enemy of? Do Americans not see this outright plan to degrade the work of media figures meant to pull back the curtain on dishonest people like him? Again, he's not hiding his fascism, and he never has. When Fox News doesn't repeat his propaganda, he shamelessly attacks them like they're violating their sworn oath to him. He wants people fired and networks to have their licenses revoked when they don't cover for his blunders. He literally expects loyalty, and many times he gets it. Well, I'll just tell you what I'm hearing from people who I have been talking to, uh, and that is that uh, if her goal was to close the deal, they're not sure she did that. And, you know, some people have asked, is she being held to a different standard? Maybe. But that's maybe the world that she's living in. Who's the vice president supposed to seal the deal with? Are we asking if Donald Trump is sealing the deal with Democratic voters, many of which can tell that he's a fascist? Are we asking if he should be worried that many members of his own administration refuse to support him, including his chief of staff, defense secretary, and vice president openly warning us about him? That's some nasty work. But the conclusion about Harris living in a double standard where we debate whether or not she worked at McDonald's in 1983 is, that's just the world that we live in. Okay, so when black folks say we live in a world full of double standards, where unqualified, privileged idiots like Trump are given endless chances to screw things up, the response is, you're crazy, stop complaining. But when Dana Bash finally realizes that it's true, her conclusion is, oh well, so with no acknowledgement that we've been saying this forever, which might be why it continues to happen right in front of our faces. You know, it strikes me what's interesting about the moment we're in right now is that we in the media are treating Vice President Harris like we treat a normal politician and we're critiquing her answers and we're talking about, well, she could have said this differently, she could have said that differently. Meanwhile, the Republican nominee literally is talking about mm -hmm. liberals being the enemy within talking about using the pen, using the military to go after these people. His defenders say, oh no, he's talking about uh, going after illegal immigrants or he's going after you know, mobs in the street. And Trump will say, no, no, no. I mean, going after the Pelosi's, <laughs> going after Adam Schiff, going after Democrats. Um, and these campaigns are in two different universes. Yep. Now, Jake Tapper has the privileged landscape all mapped out, including he and his colleagues role in it but still can't complete the thought of where they decide to just stop participating in it. Apparently Trump's going on 
is going to tape a thing with, with Joe Rogan. Do you think she should, should do that? I think that she should keep calling Donald Trump a fascist. And I think that Americans need to keep looking at the rhetoric of Donald Trump because I don't know why we're even thinking about electing somebody who's talking about putting people in camps. I don't know why we're talking, or why we want to elect somebody who's talking about mass deportation. I don't know why we're having this conversation which, about somebody who wants to terminate the Constitution to overthrow the results of an election. Aren't we supposed to be a patriotic country? Whenever somebody like Colin Kaepernick takes a knee in this country, everybody talks about, oh, that's so unpatriotic. But a guy, a, a guy can say he wants to terminate the Constitution to overthrow the results of an election and nobody cares. And like even 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 me bringing it up now, you you brought it back to Kamala and Joe Rogan, Anderson. Yeah. Who gives a damn? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I think you give a damn of who's elected president. And yeah, I'm, especially I'm asking if that you... president is a fascist. That's yeah. talking about putting people in camps. That's talking about once again terminating the constitution to overthrow the results of an election. That's talking about you know jailing his political opponents. Yeah. Like that rhetoric doesn't scare people. It's such a simple and obvious point. Anderson Cooper illustrated why it's hard for some folks in his position to fully accept it. Well, we, we talk about this every single. This is what I, I, I don't think I've been talking about, about this enough. every every night. I don't think y'all have enough conversations about it. I feel like I heard more on this network about is Kamala Harris black than I do about you know yeah. Donald Trump being a fascist. Well, am, I, am I wrong, I, I, Angela? I, I, honestly, that's bullshit. I'm sorry. Oh, I like that. That's no, no, that is that, that. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not look, I'm a huge fan of yours. Okay. But to say that we're sitting around talk, discussing is Kamala Harris black? Like I. Oh, I mean, I've seen that. I've seen oh, those roundtable discussions on. a lot. That's now that's true. bullshit, Anderson. For you to say that y'all don't have those conversations, uh, I've never asked somebody. Is oh, I'm not saying Kamala you. Harris. I said the you. network. He said the network. He I don't think anyone. On, I, you know, I don't think any anchor on this network has been going around saying, "Is, is she black?" Y'all have never it's had definitely, a. It's I, definitely. I mean, we have been... had. Uh, look, I'm sure we have had, you know, nutty people or or people <laughs> who have strongly held <laughs> beliefs who I may disagree with, yeah. who somewhere on some panel mm -hmm. have said something, but yeah. I, you know, I will just but speak even, up for, for what I do on the show. I do believe it's important to get people different viewpoints as long as they're willing to have a legitimate conversation. It's a, what I don't like is, are surrogates who come out and just spout talking points that they don't even believe. And those yeah. are people I tried to eliminate from having ever on the air again. It's because Anderson Cooper took the legitimate criticism personally. In our quest to appear to be impartial, we've gotten to the point that we pander to candidates and voters that are inarguably radical. So when an entire political movement's principles are based in illegality, stripping human rights, a suppression of free speech, racism, and blatant disinformation, those that want to come off as objective are forced to ignore those radical positions, which normalizes them. So now calling for the suspension of the Constitution in America is up for discussion. I think no network has honest conversations about Donald Trump. You haven't had, nobody's had honest conversations about Donald Trump since 2016. I saw last night they were talking about, you know, the double standard that exists between Donald Trump and the vice president, but it's always a double standard with Trump, whether it's with Hillary, whether it's, you yeah. know, against Biden. Now with, with Kamala, you, you, we talk about him being a threat to democracy, but we don't treat him like one. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know what you've been watching, but like, I don't know of any Trump supporters out there or people who like him who are tuning in f to me every night to try to get, you know, to, to be validated in their opinions. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't disagree think, I don't with think you. it's about validating. What do you mean? Validating the Trump? Well, well you're saying like that we're not that I bet. I guess you're saying I'm not discussing all the things he is saying and doing and pointing it out. They talk about it, but don't mention on a consistent basis that his goals are to end democracy, no matter what he's complaining about. His running mate can say this with full confidence that no one will respond with, are you kidding me? Do you know who your boss is? Oh, look, we, we admire Taylor Swift's music, but I don't think most Americans, whether they like her music or fans of hers or not, are going to be influenced by a billionaire celebrity who I think is fundamentally disconnected from the interests uh, and, and, and the problems of most Americans.